and welcome to That's Cool Speaks. Today is Tuesday, January 29th, and this is episode 238. I am Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravel Ravelry, and the Fat S Q R R L on Instagram. Hi, how are you? Today's episode will have probably no shenanigans because, like, it's cold, and shenanigans are limited when it's cold. There have been plenty of shenanigans of the mind. Those are very important shenanigans, but I think today will be a mostly knitting podcast. We've been playing a new game, well, we only played it twice, but we played a new game by um, Stonemeyer Games, which is called Wingspan, and I'm hoping to have kind of like, it's not actually, it's a, they did a pre-order for it, um, so it won't be out until March, but I'm hoping that Tove and I are gonna do a little like, woohoo, about this game thing. Hey, so I forgot to put this in, even though, like, hi, it was a huge thing. Um, so I'm gonna put the shameless self-promotion at the front of the episode, unlike I normally do, um, but I'm doing a pre-order starting February 1st because like it's already February almost y'all but anyway so starting February 1st I'm gonna have pre-orders up for this these bags um so that'll probably go up February 1st at 9 a.m and then I'll keep the pre-order slots open for a week or until the pre-orders sell out whichever is first um and this is a true pre-order this is a print to order fabric um so it'll probably be a four to six week range it will be in the four to six reach weeks range for shipment um, so just be aware of that. These are not already ready to go, like most of my updates. And I really appreciate folks who are willing to wait that long for a bag. Um, I said it last time I did a pre-order, but I know that is a lot to ask from a customer. And so I really appreciate that you're that willing to wait for a bag. It really helps small business owners when we can do that. So thank you. But so here is, this is not ironed. Whew. This is the um, large wedge. And it'll be interesting to see how this reads. Right now, this this heart is reading very orange bright, but it's really not. Um, so this is the large wedge. It's a cotton linen blend. And you'll see, you'll probably get a cat. I, I just don't know how to tell you how much I love. Like, look at the tea. Um, there will also be a sweater size, and this is the sweater size. Now, you'll see that this is a larger scale of the print, and you will see, you may not get a cat on the sweater size, just because the scale of the print is so large that the placement will vary quite a bit. I will try my best to get a cat on every bag, um, but that may not happen. If you will die if you don't get a cat on your bag, or you literally don't want your bag unless there's a cat on it, please just put a note in your order for me. <laughs> And that way, if I don't have a cat, I can, can, can refund you. Um, but isn't that just the best? I mean, hi, I love this color so much. It's very similar to the honey colorway from Quince and Company. And then I also, of course, have that in an Erin sweater, which is my biggest bag. And there she is. I anticipate the Erin sweater should all have cats. I hate to say that out loud, but I don't think it'll be a problem. And in case you're new to the show, my Aaron sweater bags are, quite frankly, humongous. I am a size 26, 28, and these will hold any sweater I've made for myself without squishing. Or without, like, cramming. Maybe that's better, without cramming. So, yeah. So, I'm really excited about these. Oh, I really, like, I am not a cat person. I'm not, I'm hesitant to say that. I'm totally not a cat person, but I really just dig this fabric so much. Oh, so again, those, those pre-orders were open February 1st, um, and you can find them at fatsquirrelfibers.com. And yeah, lots of knitting. Well, lots for me anyway. Um, so let's just get into it. I actually even did spinning, but I won't talk about that this time. Maybe I will talk about it this time. Why not? Hmm. 
So in spinning, yes, there's actually spinning. Um, I have decided, I have this fiber that I got from, look how pretty, oh, look at that light. Ooh, winter, why are you so delicious? We're in that stage of winter where everybody's like, I'm over you winter, and I'm like, not me winter. I know it's not a popular opinion, but I'm totally still into you. <sighs> Don't worry, I won't, I won't keep it to myself. Who shot it? I love you winter! I know that I am coming from a place of privilege because we can buy coats that are warm enough to survive you in and I don't have to go out in you if I don't really want to quite frankly because there are no animals or other humans that I have to leave the house to take care of and like I know that there's a lot of privileges associated with me saying that I really like you but I don't care I really like you. I understand that other people don't I don't dismiss their dislike of you but I really love you and secretly I want to move further north into you. That's right, Winter. I'm so into you that I want to move further into you in a physical way. I'm just saying. This got like real intense. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Maybe I'm also really into Winter so much because my whole face tastes like cardamom. Because, hi, Tuft Woolens makes cardamom lip balm. And if you are a fan of the cardamom, it's the best. I found this in my winter coat pocket when I put on my real coat for the first time this year and it was better than finding a $20 bill. I'm not even kidding you, even though I could have probably bought four of these with a $20 bill, but whatever. It was such a delight. So again, that's Tuft Woolens. Her lip balm, her cardamom lip balm is my favorite. I'm just looking at my other favorite lip balm, which is a badger. <laughs> I can show it to you because it's so ridiculous. This is my other favorite lip balm, which is my Badger, um, badger balms, you know. Do you see how ridiculously big it is? I love that their lip balms are so big that you can put them on your whole face. I'm not gonna lie. What? Also, it's like less easy to lose them. Cause you're not gonna forget where that thing is. <laughs> we were talking about spinning. Of course we were. So I bought this beautiful fiber from, actually, did I buy this or did not Spin Farm give this to me? She's so generous, like who knows? She gives me so much that it's quite frankly obscene. Oh my gosh, if it's not delicious ancient grains or beautifully prepared food, it's fiber. I mean, come on. Also, I have your heart over here that she totally gave me. Anyway. So I started spinning this on my spindles because I was like, I'm gonna make a skinny yarn if it's the death of me because she makes beautiful sock yarn. See, I'm looking at it right now and I know it's not gonna be three ply fingering weight, but whatever, whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna be for my feet. So, but rather than, I have been stalling on this for so long. I've not picked up a spindle probably since like this summer. So I decided that what I'm gonna do in the interest of like, moving forward with this project. I'm gonna finish the rest of it on my wheel. So I have just a little bit over a third that needed to be spun and then I'm gonna, th this is a third. And so, but then I'm like, in the future, I'm like, maybe I should just start trying to do a spindle project for like a third of a bump of fiber and then doing that so that I would still have the experience of doing the spindling, which I do quite enjoy, uh, but I am not very proficient at it. Um, so it's, it's a bit, and I also just like haven't quite worked in how to make it happen in my day efficiently yet. Um, but so I think maybe I'm gonna try to do that. Hopefully that'll help me to encourage to use my beautiful spindles, but then also make me feel like I am like making things happen. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Maybe that. Oh, I forgot to mention, I am wearing my interlude shawl which is a pattern by Lisa, I guess it's Haynes, it's H-A-N-N-E-S. Um, and this is with Barrett Wool Company. I almost said part, I feel like I always mishmash those words in my face, but it's Susan B. Anderson's company, <laughs> Barrett Wool Company. And this is her worsted weight, this is the home. So this is not the Wisconsin wool, and this is the worsted spun one. And it, I just started wearing this again. I was like, I kind of sat in my, in my, um, 
like shawl bin for quite some time because I kept trying to put it on. It's like that boomerang shape, which I generally find I can wear. But for some reason, I just was not... So I brought it out again and actually just needed to just kind of work on how to get it around my head in a, in a proper way, but now I'm really enjoying it. And of course these colors are just... This is her, I think this one is called Field, and it is such a good, ooh, such a good color. And there's Pepper, which is the black-ish. And then I can't remember what this one is, but it'll be clear which one it is. So I'm enjoying that. <clears throat> so that is my spinning. I have to ply, I have some hobbledy whore batlings on there that I'm gonna ply soon. So I hope I'll actually have a finished yarn for you next time. <laughs> So I finished a pair of socks. They are Christmas socks. <laughs> and I did start them before Christmas. They were not a Christmas cast on. Um, these are Spacious OMG. It's a pattern by Megan Williams, who is of course of the stock and it's zombies. Um, I enjoy that heel quite a lot. It is a heel that kind of just like pops onto my foot in a nice, in a very pleasant way. And I, I like it quite a bit. Um, I did the cuff down because for me, I would prefer to do, it has a, a mini gusset. See, Spacious is one needle mini gusset. That's the OMG. And so she has it written as both a toe up and a cuff down. Um, and her pattern has, I mean, it has like a ton of different stitch counts in it. And I think it's like from... Anyway, it's like at least your 56 to 72, but I know it's more than that. It's like 48 to 76, maybe even plus more. So you could knit just about anybody a pair of socks with those numbers. Um, I prefer to do the top down on it because there are um, quite a few of increases or decreases, depending on which way to go, right here at the ball of the foot. And so I prefer to do it top down because those, um, of course, decreasing is stronger than an increase is. I've done them both ways. Um, but I just feel more comfortable doing decreases uh, for a gusset just because it's a little bit sturdier, especially when it is falls in a place where my my socks get a good amount of wear. So this yarn is from West Yorkshire Spinners. I think it's a 7525. And it's very Christmassy. And I will wear them for the rest of the year. I have no shame about wearing Christmas socks when it's not Christmas. Okay. And then I have another finished object that might be a little bit humongous. So I finished my Hedge Witch shawl, and that pattern is by Nat Redwolf, correct? Yes. And I knit mine with Lopi, um, Plotu Lopi, which is the single ply. And I held that along with a skein of, a strand of a mohair silk. I used Webb's um, Southampton. And so, there's my shawl, right? It's so huge. It is enormous, right? It is 110 inches from point to point along the top, and it's 43 inches deep, which is perfect, because it works that if I wear it in a traditional way, so if I just wear it straight up, I can cross it over myself and tie it in the small of my back. And then I can go feed my chickens in the back. I don't have chickens. This shawl should come with chickens though. So then I can just go outside and feed my little chickens and carry a basket and gather their eggs and I will be so picturesque. Whatever. But it is so... So it's long enough that it can go across over the front. I can tie it in the back. Again, as I said earlier, I'm a big lady. I'm like a 26, 28 um, women's size. So it does that, it goes down to my butt. It doesn't cover my butt totally, but it goes to my butt. And what else? And it only weighs a, like a pound and like 0.5 ounces. Right. It is humongous. It's basically like a blanket. See, 110 by 43. Well, this queen top is only 60 by 80, so it's like 
like sort of like the same square inches, right? Something like that. Yeah, it totally is actually almost the same square inches as the queen top, just the top, not the hangover. Um, and it only weighs a little over a pound, less than 500 grams. So fun. And it really does feel like you're not wearing, I mean, you know, imagine a pound dispersed completely over evenly over your body. It doesn't feel like you're wearing anything except warmth. That's what I'm wearing. See, I wonder why I love winter so much. I can't imagine why. I think my husband and I are eventually going to have to be fancy people who own different homes. We are not fancy people, but we're going to have to have some sort of like snowbird relationship where we only meet up in the summers in the north because <laughs> it's the winter so much. And every year it's like, if I could just hibernate, I would hibernate. And I'm like, I really do love this combo of like the um the mohair silk yeah the mohair silk held with the yarn now this of course is um not a traditional like worsted weight yarn or anything or worsted spun yarn but it is just so just adds that extra little bit of loftiness and halo speaking of which I'm working on my three color cashmere cowl which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli and I am also holding cashmere silk with it. Are you ready? What? <gasps> right. So this is Madeline Tosh. Um, <laughs> la, la, la. Do I look for yarn things every time? Why, yes I do, it's part of my charm. You're just folding laundry, shush. Okay, right. We're knitting, it's cool. So the blue is Madeline Tosh sock in the, I did this last time too, and I looked it up. Let's go with mirror colorway. It's in the show notes. And I'm holding, holding that double with Shibui knits Silk Cloud, which is 60% kid mohair, 40% milk, silk. <laughs> there is milk fiber, but that's not it. Um, in the Fjord colorway. And then this is another Crafty Girls. Oops. It's another Crafty Girls alpaca sock in the Vast colorway. So this one is... 80, excuse me, 60% superwash merino, 20% SF alpaca, and 20% nylon. And I'm holding that with Lion Brands mohair silk, which I think is discontinued. Sorry. But look at the color. So, So here's another Crafty Girls colorway without the silk. So you can you can see that it does change the color um, perhaps more than I really wanted it to, but at the same time, I still love the effect. I think it's beautiful. Um, yeah. So fun. So far I am, you know, I like the other, I, I like the other al mohair silks. Um, just as much as the Shibui. Now I can't have not, I can tell when I'm knitting with it that the like core strand of the Shibui feels to me, again, maybe it's just me making stuff up. It does feel more like a silk to me and just the, the texture of it is slightly different, the core. Um, but the overall effect I feel like is very similar um, with both the webs, Southampton, and then in this case, the Lion brand, but so pretty, right? So you can see that that orange is oranging up um, Sarah's yarn quite a bit. And I love it in this color, but I also love it with the additional orange. So I just love it. And so that's the three color cashmere cow by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I don't think I'm going to add a third color. I think I'm just going to work with the two colors. And so there's like a big band of a third color, but I think I'll just do that with the beautiful 
um, another crafty girl and the orange. By the way, have you seen her new? She's got like three new colorways out that are beautiful. And I want them all. Got this. <laughs> but I love the idea of the option of adding the mohair silk into like, now this, um, you know, this, the merino is, or excuse me, the Madeline Tosh is just a straight up merino. Um, but even into, you know, traditional smoother yarns, just because it gives that little bit of extra warmth that is sometimes really helpful. Now, I'm sure when I get to like April, I'm gonna be like, oh crud, everything I knit this year is super duper warm and what am I gonna do? Whatever, I got other stuff that's not. It's fine. Future me, settle down. No need to be so sassy. So in my alpaca silk, Armageddon. I don't know what it is. I'm also thinking this is um, Knit Spin Farm. This is one of her sock club colorways. And this is the gourd. So she does like little known holidays. And this is her. Wait. No, this is the soup. Is it the soup one or the gourd one? No, it's the gourd one. It's the gourd one. Okay. It's the gourd one. Okay. This is the gourd one. And so I'm like, oh, I want to. I can't decide if I want to do double weight slippers with the mohair silk? Wouldn't that be fun? It's so warm. Or do I want to do mitts? Oh, I can't decide. But so I'm so excited about blending like extra fibers in with all of my, um, my other fingering weight yarns. Now this is a Coriadale, which does have, can you tell that it has a little bit more halo? than for example a superwash merino. So it already has its nice light lofty base uh, but I think this would just be even more fun to add it in. Oh! I want to make everything is probably the problem. Okay. And then last on the things is a new pattern or something new I've cast on. Oh no it's not. I had to do the shutter first. So also I am knitting the after party sweater which is a pattern by Astrid Trolland? Am I saying that right? Astrid Trolland. Um, and so, and it's from Lane Magazine. So I have two sleeves done and here's my body so far. So this is where I was, whoops, last week. I haven't knit on this as much uh, because I was finishing this blanket sweater, shawl, schlanket. Um, but, hello. How gorgeous. So I'm starting with bust increases. And yeah, I'm going to do this one, I believe, as a cardigan. That is my plan at this point. Um, I just feel like, you know, maybe it's just me. And it probably is just me. It is definitely just me. But every time I put on like a regular pullover sweater, I just feel very dowdy. And so I don't want to do a pullover because I often feel like I'm like putting on my khakis and going to my cube. Mirror. So I think that I want to make it a cardigan and wear it over nonsensical house dresses because I'm living a life where my entire wardrobe will be completely unbusiness casual friendly so that I can never go back to that life. <laughs> so anyway, so this is Bartlett Yarns and this is their sport weight. So this is one cone of yarn, which I'm pretty sure is gonna get me through the whole sweater. I mean, besides the one skein of contrast color. So I'm hoping that it'll get me through. And I have quite a bit, I mean, I've got both of my sleeves done and I've got this much left. And I am a big lady, but my, uh, this is more than half done. And so yeah, I've got the yoke and a lot of the yoke is the contrast color. So I think I'm gonna make it with just the one um, cone. And now I have a new thing to show you. I cast on Hey Brownberry of the Hey Brownberry Con podcast has a sock pattern called Pebbles and Pathways. Yeah, I'm always afraid I'm inverting it. Pebbles and Pathways. Right. So her name is Marce Smith. Yes, okay. Um, and so I am knitting mine. I have a really fat foot, so you can tell that. I'm knitting mine with Quince and Company. Chickadee, which is the sport weight. Um, and so I'm doing a 64 stitch sock, but in the sport weight color, or the sport weight. 
so for to fit my normal 72 inch foot sock self. I feel like none of those words were in the correct order, so I'm hoping that you could just parse that out. I apologize. <laughs> it's really cold outside. I'm completely warm inside, but I'm just gonna try to have any excuse possible for my ridiculous inability to speak. Um, <laughs> So anyway, so it is a toe-up pattern with just a very simple little cable on either side and then the pebbles in the middle. And usually I'm very opposed to purling in a sock, like I actually have some sort of deep spiritual opposition to it. Um, but because this is sport weight and because it's only every other row and because it's only these few stitches in the middle and because you get this fun texture, I'm okay with it just garter in the round. Um, but the other thing I like about a sock with garter in the round on the top is that I feel like it does mimic your foot a bit better, um, especially when you go to do your heel turn and whatever. Like this is naturally a little bit shorter than this. Just be, I mean, it can stretch, but in its relaxed state, it's just a little bit shorter. Um, and so I feel like it does a nice job when you're going up, um, what is that called? Your ankle, uh, whatever. <laughs> In step is that what it's called? I don't even know. <laughs> so I do have a little um, sock double point in, or mitten, no glove. Gosh, I even ate lunch. Like I have got food in my system, drinking tea, really just having cognitive difficulties. I apologize. Um, so a little mitten glove. I did it again. A little glove double point. <laughs> <laughs> just stick in the toe uh, to do my cable. And it's not, it's just a four stitch cable. Um, it's more just for like comfort to not have to take them off the needle on this smaller gauge. So yes, that's enjoyable. This is a stitch marker that I made. I didn't make the mushroom. I assembled, this is a stitch marker I assembled. <laughs> so you can't buy it anywhere. Oh, so cute. It has seemed very appropriate to put on Mars's pattern. Right? Quince and Company honey is just so good. So I used to be a vehemently non, non nylon sock yarn person. So I was like convinced that I have to have nylon in my socks because I did make a sock once that was, did not have nylon in it and I immediately shredded it. However, I think that was in part because it was a two ply superwash merino. So I'm hoping that the quince is four plies, the chickadee I think is four ply. I'm having this issue lately where my feet are somehow both cold and sweaty. Now, if you are just armchair like doctoring me for a second because I'm a fat lady, just chill out. There's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> my sugars are fine. I don't have the diabetes and I don't have like leaky foot syndrome or anything. It's just like, <laughs> You do stuff, your feet get warm, and then your socks get wet, and then like they get clammy, it's gross. What's going on? What's happening? I can't do it anymore. <sighs> Will I edit that out? I don't know. Maybe I should just edit that out. But anyway, so I want to try a non-nylon, um, non-superwash, and see how that goes for my feet. Let's just see what happens. I don't know. So in case you're wondering why I'm not doing a superwash, it's not because I'm like opposed to the superwash process or anything like that. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna try it out and see if I like it. And then hopefully I do and that would be awesome because I love quins and I love all socks knit of quins. Like they're all amazingly gorgeous. Somebody just finished a collection. So wouldn't it be fun? Because like Ambrose Smith just released, did you see all those sock patterns she just released? that are all knit with quince and they're all flippin' gorgeous, right? I mean, part of the fun of buying sock yarn is that it can be any ridiculous thing you want it to be, but then there's also just this intense beauty. Ugh, this one is called Paddington Station. And it's a whole, ooh, it's a whole Miss Marple collection, right? Am I not, am I, I think I'm right. How gorgeous. So, ugh, so fancy. Everything is delicious. I'm gonna eat it all. Eat it all. Yeah, it's 
in this marble collection of socks. I'm just saying. Anywho, so I'm like really hoping that these work because then I'm excited about knitting all of the point socks. Let's see what happens. Okay. Whew. I'm wearing double shawls and it's getting a little crazy. This is, do you feel, can you hear me like internally being like, oh my gosh, you've got to edit 70% of what you just said. We'll see if I remember to do it. Anyway, I think that's all. I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.